Hey guys, today's painting video is going to be a two-part video. And the first part is going to be concerning the crawdad patterns I just did the last two weeks. Now I had a comment from one of the subscribers, his name is Darren. And Darren was wondering if I could do a little bit different on the stencil so he could see it. See, Darren is deaf, so he can't hear what I'm saying. And if I understood him right, your closed caption TV or whatever, either he doesn't have it or it wasn't giving him a good enough information of how I was doing the stencils. So for the first part of the video, Darren, this is going to be for you. We're going to do a close-up on how the stencils work, air pressure, everything else, and then we'll move on and do the standard video for the week. Now the standard video is going to be a top water popper. Now this is the popper that has the slits here in the mouth and then the gill is open so it chugs the water back into the mouth and up through the gill which gives you a lot more surface action, a lot more water disturbance which really helps for the top water. We're going to paint this in a frog pattern. So stick with me. Alright, to show what I mean, we're just going to do this on a piece of typing paper. This is the what I use for my stencil for my craws. So I had to mark it left or right, so you can use it on either side. And I want to just go right along the outside edge, letting the drift over be what I'm after. But we want to shoot it on the edge of the stencil. So let's lay it down here. You can see I'm mainly spraying on the stencil itself. And when you pick up, that gives you the sharp edge of the shell and kind of a, a shadow effect. So just set that back in again. And we get the same effect. Let me wipe that off a little bit. The key is I'm back to 15 pounds of air pressure and how far back you pull the trigger. There we go. So what you want to do is just spray on the edge of the stencil, let the extra come off the side, it gives a nice sharp edge, and that's what will give you your pattern for your crawdad. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get on our base coat of white, and as always, just a good coat of white all over. More there in the belly. Alright, we got our first base coat of white. Now we'll move on. You guys, we often talk about putting on the base coat, the white, and I thought I'd take a second and show you maybe why it's a little important. Here are two lures. Hopefully this will show up well in the deal. This one on the top, as you can see, it looks like it's a lot brighter red than the one on the bottom. A little bit brighter red. The red stands out a little bit better. That is the exact same paint on both lures. The top lure has a white base coat, this lure was just painted red with no white base coat. So as you can see, just adding that white base coat makes the red stand out so much better. So that's why we like to put the white base coat on all the time. All right, let's move on to the lure. So what we're going to do is while I got some red in, I want to shoot it right here in the mouth first. I'm going to do it a little different. I don't want a lot of bleed back here, at least I want to be able to take care of it later. So we're going to try to do, shoot right here in the mouth. And again, it's how far back we pull. So we're going to be a little careful with that and control that a little if we can. There we go. As you can see, we're getting a little on these openings in the side, and that's good. That shows through. But that's what we want, just the red. I didn't want to get any red up on the body. 
All right, we're going to paint this it's in a frog pattern. So the first thing we're going to do, now that we've got the mouth done, we're going to come back and do the belly. I'm going to use Createx Transparent Bright Yellow. So we'll use bright yellow for the belly. The only thing we need to be a little careful with here now is don't spray up into the mouth. So that's the only thing we need to do. So a lot of times we spray from front to back. This time we're going to kind of spray from the side or back to front to avoid getting any paint up inside the mouth. And that's it. That's what we'll do for the belly. That's what we're going to call that good. Let's wash out the brush and we'll move on. Right here in the middle of painting this, I've changed my mind. I had an idea the green, I was going to use some of the Walmart colors. And I thought, now nah, let's do this instead. I got an idea. We're going to take some Createx Pearlized Green. This is pearl green in Createx. We're going to throw a little of this in the cup. And now I'm going to take a little Createx Pearlized Lime. So this is pearl, pearl lime. We're going to throw a little of this in the cup. Three or four drops maybe. See what we get. Looking for a little bit lighter colored green. But I like the pearl effect. So stir that up a little. You know what? I'm, I'm lime happy today. So let's throw in two more drops of lime. Oh yeah, I like that. That looks good. All right. Let's load it up. All right, now we're going to do the back. And again, I don't want to get any up in the mouth. So I'm going to kind of stay top side here and shoot back. See if I can do that without getting my hand in it too, huh? Maybe I should have done it that way. All right, let's go this way. I'm staying on the top, let it let it bleed down over the side, let it taper down into the yellow. You can kind of get a little angle so you get a little down there, but don't get too carried away. And there we go. That is good right there. Alright, let me clean this up. We'll move on to the next step. Every self-respecting frog needs spots on the back and there's lots of ways you can probably do spots um, I've seen a q-tip and just touch it a uh, paintbrush but I am not very good at doing that when I do something like that I end up I try to do them random I just can't make them look random when I get done I'm never happy with that so to me the only random way to put spots on something we're going to splatter it with the toothbrush. So that's the way we're going to do it. So, but what we're going to do, we're going to set him this way. We're going to start out with Createx Opaque Black. We're going to go with some black spots first. We're going to give him two colors of spots. Put a little black down there. And as we always do, we just flick it at him. All right, there's the black spots. Now, let me wipe that off just a little bit. Don't need to really wash it. We're gonna come back with some Createx opaque, get it in the screen, I guess, yellow. Gonna try a little yellow. Put a little of that here. And there we go. So we have two colored spots on the side. And that yellow, as you can see, a little bit darker, but I had to, I left a little, I didn't wash the brush out. And that way, it wasn't a real bright yellow. It doesn't quite match up there. It's a little bit darker. It goes with the black. And there's our spots. So all we need a set of eyes. If you notice, this has got the oblong eyes. This does not have the regular eyes in it that most of them have. 
So let me get some eyes in. We'll get our two-piece top coat on. And we'll take a look and see what we got when we're all done. Well, there we go, guys. There is our top water popper in a frog pattern. Now, if you get any of these poppers with the slits in the mouth and the gill plates open, make sure when you put the two-part epoxy on, don't get those holes plugged up. you got to be a little light inside the mouth so you don't plug those holes up. Otherwise, that's guys for this week. Thanks a lot for sticking with me. Subscribe to our channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.